Going back now to the State of the Union, and right beforehand, President Obama and Senator Mark Kirk had a pretty nice moment. Look at this. Senator Kirk just returned, of course, to the Senate last month following a massive stroke, and you can see before the thing, they had that, uh, that fist bump explode action followed by a little hug. Kind of a cool moment, though. It really was. Yeah. It really was. And, of course, the president did get to work, talk about some of the big issues during last night's address. We want to weigh in on this whole event here. Former White House insider Laura Schwartz, she's been to a number of these State of the Union addresses, and she's here with a little color this afternoon. What would you think? I, I thought it was great. You know, 59 minutes, 51 seconds, 87 applause lines, and that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good stop for him. Um, it was good reception in the chamber, but last night I think we really saw that he was speaking beyond the chamber. He was talking to the American people. He was talking to the organizers that are left over from the campaign that he now wants to really call these congressmen and women and tell them, we heard these great proposals, now we want some action. So it's all going out from here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, President Obama on the road today in North Carolina. In fact, he was speaking a short time ago there. So, I mean, he really, one thing that he has done a lot of is take his ideas that maybe Congress doesn't like, <laughs> then go out and campaign, even after the campaign. And that's the way to do it. We saw it with the rising of the debt ceiling mm -hmm. um, right at the end of last year, early this year. But it'll be really interesting. He's in North Carolina today talking manufacturing. He'll be here on Friday talking about violence. And he's going to be greeted by a city, as we all know, has been inundated with youth violence. In mm. fact, he'll be greeted by a new sh cover of the Time Up Chicago magazine, which shows the city in blood. And it's an yeah. in-depth story on youth violence. But it's very timely. I'm glad he's choosing Chicago to come to to talk about that. And um, and that's where it really gets heavy. And that's where the weight is on the American people to really tell Congress this is what we need done. But there were some light moments last yeah. night, too. Yeah, the fist yeah. bump we showed. Uh, the, yeah. the fist bump, I thought that was fantastic. Watching Senator Kerry come into the uh, into the chamber for the first time as Secretary Kerry, he had huge applause. He got stopped almost as much as the president going down the aisle, walking in the chamber with all of his old buddies up there. And President Obama had quite a few people screaming rambling to shake his hand as he came in. You'll notice if you play that back, they're both Democrats and Republicans because that way they get to go back to their constituency and say, hey, I had a one-on-one -on -one with the president. <laughs> Albeit brief, and yes, there were 948 people there. I had that moment. You did notice they had these big smiles on their faces and Obama just going, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, smiles, hey, whatever. Huge smiles. They were there waiting since 8, 9 in the morning. Really? Those members really? of Congress themselves go there, they stake out their seats, and they sit there. They bond with everybody around themselves. You know, these are the things where you think they just walk in, they're all assigned at the end. Not true. They, it's just like going to Lollapalooza. They're getting there early. They're I getting had no their idea. seats. I didn't either. I, yeah. didn't, I always assumed it was assigned seating where everyone had their seat and they just no, happened to be along ex the, the aisle. Except for the cabinet, the justices, and a few members of Congress in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ranking uh, majority. No, they, they were there early yesterday. <laughs> I mean, really, they are concert goers. And it was really interesting to see, let's see, the fashion statements. Uh -huh. You have some people wearing blue, some people wearing red. Uh, there was one Republican congresswoman that lost a bet with a Democratic congresswoman, and oh, if, no. they, if Obama won, they both had to wear blue. So, <laughs> so there's always things like that going on. But the orange lapel pins I thought were really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Forty members of Congress wore them. They stand for no labels, meaning it stop just being your party line. Start voting the way your constituents want. And the green. And the green, uh, that was, of course, the memory of Sandy Hook Elementary. Mm -hmm. And you saw Michelle Obama bringing back the Jason Wu mm -hmm. again, as she's so fond of, looking great. And, and she did look fabulous. That first lady's box, ever since Reagan, has been a really great opportunity for the president to see people that are Medal of Honor recipients, people right. that exemplify his message, and people that bring real value to the sure. reason of why gun control has to be passed, for example, and others. So it's always a statement who's sitting next to her. And, of course, that dress is always a statement mm -hmm. on Mrs. Obama. She knows she's making one that's for sure always good having you here and you bring so many insights I I had no idea the seats weren't assigned that I is my fact either. of the day yep wow. there take that use it at your dinner tonight all there right. we go cocktail sure. talk <laughs> make oh, it smarter. thank you wow <laughs> thank white you. house insider Laura Shorts thank you for being here and good to see you